Hello friends, welcome to my channel. So today we are going to discuss about very small topic that is red nucleus. So please subscribe to my channel for new videos and let us explore this what is red nucleus. So the red nucleus it is nothing but a small amount of the gray matter, gray matter which is present in the midbrain. Strictly speaking, it is present at the rostral tegmentum of the midbrain. Okay, so it is a rostral tegmentum of the midbrain. We can identify the cigar shaped mass cigar shaped gray matter which is called as the red nucleus Yeah, that is about the red nucleus and what about the measurement of it? So measurement on the shape is it is 5 mm in the di diameter. If you take a section of it, the transverse diameter is about the 5 mm, 5 mm and it is situated posterior to the substantia nigra, posterior to the substantia nigra. It extends from the level of the caudal part of caudal part of the superior colliculus, sub caudal part of the superior colliculus to the subthalamus okay or to the subthalamic region okay so here in this second picture we can identify these projections are nothing but superior colliculus and here you can identify the inferior colliculus so from the superior colliculus caudal end of the superior colliculus and the substantia nigra which is extending upwards and reaches to the subthalamic region so inside this we can identify the red nucleus okay that is about the extension of the red nucleus and then what about the covering of this red nucleus so red nucleus is covered by a capsule that capsule is extension of the superior cerebellar peduncles superior cerebellar peduncles here you can identify in the second picture we can see the superior cerebellar peduncles over here so from the superior cerebellar peduncles the capsule which is extending upwards and covers this red nucleus okay that is about the uh, briefly i'm just telling you the location than the covering of this red nucleus then moving to the yeah moving to the parts exactly where it is located let me show you that so here you can see this is how the red nucleus is present okay so that is about the location extension and the position of the red nucleus then parts of the red nucleus so the parts of the red nucleus so the parts are there are two parts of there: cranial part and the cardinal part so the cranial part is called as Parvocellular part, caudal part is called as magnocellular part. So the caudal part, we can identify the large size, uh, large size multipolar neurons are present. Large size multipolar neurons which are present in the caudal part. So the caudal part is called as magnocellular part. Small size multipolar neurons are present at the cranial part called as parvocellular part parvocellular part whereas the parvocellular part consisting of small neurons is more recent in origin more recent in origin okay that is about the parts of red nucleus afferent fibers of the red nucleus so from which parts of the brain it is getting its inputs let us see that so the first one is so here, here you need to concentrate concentrate carefully so first input is coming from the contralateral side of the dentate nucleus of the cerebellum so in the second picture we can identify the right sided cerebellum and then here you can identify the right and left sided red nucleus so here you can identify the left sided red nucleus and here is a right sided red nucleus so this left sided red nucleus it is getting its input from the right sided dentate nucleus of the cerebellum the next input is coming from area number four and area number six of the cerebrum okay so that is about the precentral gyrus and the primary motor area they are giving inputs to the red nucleus from area number four and area number six of the cerebrum so another input another input is coming from the ipsilateral 
apsilateral part of the globus pallidus. So globus pallidus is nothing but the basal ganglia part. Okay, so basal ganglia already have discussed caudal, uh, caudate nucleus, then lentiform nucleus. Globus pallidus is a part of the lentiform nucleus. So here you can identify the left sided globus pallidus, right sided globus, globus pallidus. So the left sided globus pallidus, apsilateral globus pallidus, it is giving one input to the red nucleus. So that is the track called as pallidorubral track pallidorubral track then next input is from the substantia nigra from the substantia nigra the next input is hypothalamus from the hypothalamus also means ipsilateral hypothalamus it is getting its another input then from the tectum part of tectum part of the midbrain it is getting another input so that is about the input we have seen and now, now moving to the output or efferent fibers now coming to the output or the efferent fibers you need to understand you need to understand so if you take a section if you take a section of the caudal part of the caudal part of the uh, red nucleus so already have shown you that it is a cranial end and the caudal end so the cranial part is called as parvocellular part caudal part is called as magnocellular part so the caudal part in the caudal part if you take a section of it there are three different areas are present three different areas are present one is the ventrolateral aspect of the magnocellular part of the red nucleus then intermediate part and dorsomedial part so all are having same uh, large size multipolar neurons are present okay so in this large size multipolar neurons it is having three different areas ventrolateral intermediate and dorsomedial okay so ventrolateral intermediate and the dorsomedial so what happens to the ventrolateral fibers what happens to the intermediate fibers and what happens to the dorsomedial fibers the output how the output is going let us see that so the rubrospinal fibers rubrospinal fibers of the ventrolateral aspect they are reaching ventrolateral first i will, I will show you the dorsomedial dorsomedial is reaching to the cervical segment dorsomedial it is reaching to the cervical segments here you can identify the cervical segment then intermediate fibers they are reaching to the thoracic segment and the ventrolateral it is reaching to the lumbar and the sacral okay so that is about the three different areas of the magnocellular part of the red nucleus that you have to remember next moving to the next set of uh, fibers and uh, and the lamina structure the fibers are projected to the lamina number five lamina number six and lamina number seven of the corresponding correspond to the termination of the corticospinal track okay that is about the uh, in uh, output output of this red nucleus then other output is rubrobulbar rubrobulbar track rubrobulbar track which is extending from the red nucleus to the trigeminal nucleus and the facial nerve nucleus so here you can identify the trigeminal nucleus in the pons and the lower part of the pons we can identify the facial nerve nucleus so the rubrobulbar track then rubroreticular track rubroreticular track which is extending from the red nucleus to the reticular nucleus reticular nucleus then here we can identify from the red nucleus it is reaching to the olives olives of the medulla oblongata that is rubro olivary track rubro olivary track so that is about the output of the red nucleus and at last connection last output of the red nucleus is it is connected to the ventrolateral nucleus of the thalamus ventrolateral nucleus of the thalamus it is going to connect so the output is coming from the red nucleus to the ventrolateral nucleus of thalamus then moving to the functions the functions are monitoring the cerebellar function on the motor system by projecting impulses to the lower motor neurons or through the thalamic relay to the motor area of the cerebral cortex and simply we can say that what is a simply we can explain is the red nucleus is considered as an integrating and relay center on the following pathways so it is a relaying center just like a railway just like a station just like a station so from the cortex so the corticospinal tracks which is passing through the red nucleus 
so it is a red nucleus is a relay station that's why it is called as cortico rubro spinal tract cortico rubro nuclear tract Cart uh, cerebello rubro spinal tract these so these three tracks in these three tracks the red nucleus is acting like a relay center relay center okay just like a station it is a it is a station right? just like a station so when you are going to some other station you have to pass through another station in the same way the fibers which are coming from the cortex which are reaching to the spinal cord they are passing through the red nucleus so rubro means red nucleus so that is the end of red nucleus thank you dear students so and in the next class we will come with a new topic and uh, till then see you